Hi, this is a bonus Q&A episode. I try and go live every Thursday afternoon on the School for the Dogs Instagram account, which is simply at School for the Dogs. If you would like to ask a question in advance or be notified when I am going to go live, you can go to schoolforthedogs.com slash Q&A. I also periodically answer questions on Clubhouse. You can find me there at Annie Grossman. So Katie with her uh, dachshund mix. All right, Katie wrote, um, I got three-ish month old Sonny on January 13th and he has settled in swimmingly. He's happy-go-lucky, playful, but overall very calm and observant. One standout example, when a stranger came in the house briefly, he all but blinked at him. He only barks in the mornings to get out of his crate. He's crate trained and he sleeps for around eight hours every night. Uh, The issue. He was with foster mom on a farm before coming to be in Brooklyn and was increasingly skittish on our initial walks to the park. Note, he was on pain meds from a neuter from his neutering at first. As days wore on and pain meds wore off, this continued. So I started picking him up and walking him to the park. Eventually, he didn't want to go outside at all. We had a couple of unfortunate incidents that may have sped up the snowballing, including spooky home alone worthy passersby and one pit bull that got a little too close, sending Sunny between my boots and then yelping like a car alarm. I tried using treats, but after day five of growing anxiety, frankly, on both of our parts, I stuck to a pee pad in our backyard, and we've since had great success with him going on command on the pads, both inside and outside. My question, how soon is too soon to hit the sidewalk and or the park? He's had two rounds of vaccinations, and we are going um, to puppy socialization class at School for the Dogs on Monday. Um, But again, she wrote this like a month ago, and she just wrote me a little bit of an update. Let me see if I can find it, but I did also invite her to come on to chat here. Um, so earlier today, she wrote, hi, Annie, I've been meaning to email all week. Uh, My apologies. I'm hoping to hop on at 3 p.m. today to discuss my puppy, Sunny, socialization. Uh, I messaged you some details um, about his development, acclimating to city sounds, etc., and how amazing two puppy playtimes with Mike were as a stepping stone to going to the park uh, around the block. We did have a negative experience with a nippy dog uh, and another jumpy big boy at the park recently. But we are now home in Connecticut where we're A, socializing successfully with mom's small dogs and B, experimenting more with off-leash play and potty time in the backyard. Would love to talk about if how uh, this could pick up in the park though I don't know if that's ever something I should be confident doing. Uh, Hopefully see you soon. All right, so some really good things that Katie brought up here um, actually echoes a conversation I was having with another dog trainer recently about taking dogs to the park at all. You know, we have have this idea of what it's going to be like to get a dog and go to the park and, you know, be that person with a, you know, the co- our coffee and uh, our nice little dog who's going to go all around the park and sniff at pe- sniff and play with other people and other dogs nicely. Um, but, you know, the truth is, uh, I think the dog park is not really the right place for every dog. Um, and uh, sometimes we have ideas about um, what it's going to be like that simply aren't realistic. Actually, the conversation I was having was with our trainer, Mike, uh, who runs the playtimes Katie has been going to. Um, I was interviewing, interviewing him for School for the Dogs podcast uh, for an upcoming episode. 
Um, and, uh, you know, he and I were kind of brainstorming, uh, brainstorming, comparing notes about what, what to tell people about bringing dogs to dog parks and um, suggestions to give. And um, one thing I, I said in the conversation is sometimes um, I suggest if you have a dog who you want to be a dog park dog, try going to the dog park yourself. Um, you want to get good at sort of eyeballing what it's like, what dogs are doing at the dog park. You want to get good at reading dog behavior. You want to good. You want to get good at spotting issues, spotting potential problems before you start bringing your dog there at all. Mike suggested, you know, never being sure that you're going to the dog park. Always go to the dog park and kind of um, check it out before you ever go in because you want to make sure it's the right mix of dogs for your dog. Um, if you decided, however, that um, you never wanted to bring Sunny to the dog park at all, honestly, that would be okay with me. Um, one reason that we have schoolyard, and uh, which is like our off-leash adult um, playtime, and puppy playtime, which is playtime for puppies at school for the dogs, uh, is because we feel that puppies need that off-leash time, but that it's best if they can get it in like a really controlled environment where there is, you know, basically a trainer there to act as a lifeguard. And there's also um, a trainer there to help people learn how to observe dog play, when to intervene, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'd say keep go, keep coming to our play times if you can. Keep coming to um, our schoolyards. You know, as he gets older, that's, those are for dogs five months and older, um, because it's a safe place for him, where he's going to be developing his social skills, and you're going to get better and better at um, at n noticing what what does and doesn't look good as far as dog play goes. Um, you know, I, I especially uh, worry about bringing puppies to dog parks um, because if you have an older dog who's had a lot of, you know, different social experiences in, in his life and that older dog has a bad experience at the dog park, it's on top of, ideally, it's on top of many, 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 many good experiences. Um, if you have a young dog who has a bad experience at a dog park, that could become kind of like a foundational life experience and um, we want all of our we want to uh, you know curate our puppies worlds as much as possible to make sure that their experiences are only are only good especially with other dogs yeah there are going to be people on the street dogs on the street that you can't control but what you can control is um, is where you're walking on the street and uh, what associations your dog is making on the street. Um, if you're worried that he might be worried about going outside at all, I would suggest that you start bringing his meals outside and feeding him his meals outside. Um, it can be that simple. Now, that might mean dumping all of his kibble into a treat pouch and giving it to him piece by piece. It might mean just taking his dog food bowl and stepping out um, onto the sidewalk and putting it down there. Uh, if you're at your family's, and it sounds like you're in Connecticut, um, you know, if it's a more suburban area, maybe drive to like the main street and do it on the sidewalk of uh, the main street in whatever town you're in um, so that there's a little bit more activity. But, you know, I'm always saying dogs don't need to, most dogs don't need to learn to feel good about like bending over a bowl of food in the kitchen. Most dogs have enough good feelings about being in the kitchen where you're probably feeding them but you can feed them in a new place in order to try and create a, a good new association. Um, and if, if he's feeling worried about being outside on busy streets, then you want to start creating a new association with that. If he's too scared to eat outside at all, to eat his regular meal at all, then that's also uh, information. If that's the case, um, then you might want to try like in the lobby of your building or some sort of place that's like kind of outside but not quite. Or you could try with something like way more high value. You know, get out some like hot dogs, uh, sausage, cheese, boiled chicken, roast beef, whatever, and see if he'll take that. You know, his regular food might not be um, enticing enough. Um, beyond that, 
uh, if you can actually get him moving, I want you to just get like a really good rhythm down of giving him that delicious stuff while you're outside. Um, you know, liquid treat dispensers are great for that. We have, um, you can get ours at School for the Dogs, I'm sorry, at Store for the Dogs. Actually, I think there is a, uh, a short link, schoolforthedogs.com slash LTD. That's our liquid treat dispenser that we use. Oh, look, Katie is here. Um, let's see. Hey, Katie. Trying to let you join here. Hey. You there? Katie, can you hear me? Hi. Hey. Sorry, I wasn't sure my connection was working. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Uh, just back in Connecticut from Brooklyn with Sunny. Aw. Hold on, let me try to turn the camera around. Who is having a grand old time. Aww. Hi, me. Sunny. Or that's my mom, dog, the white dog over there, who's um, very much a toy with very few canine instincts. So Sonny spends a lot of his time trying to teach her how to play, it seems like. <laughs> but it's been a great opportunity to have him kind of roam freely. I'm lucky that I have a backyard in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So we've been, you know, experimenting with off-leashness. But I'm just curious, I guess my overarching thing to pick up um, is whether or not you think that off leash is something that is doable in the city. I'm just curious what the school for the dogs philosophy is on that. Yeah, because I feel like. Well, so I, I was dog. actually I was I was talking about it. I think you you maybe missed what I was saying, but I'm gonna just I'll just start again. Um, <laughs> I was basically saying because I, I read your question um, before you joined. I was basically saying that. Um, you know, n I think dog parks can be really tricky, and that um, the best. The best kind of dog park, I think, is the dog park that, <laughs> like a dog park like we run, where there's someone in charge, where we are controlling which dogs are there, um, where you have an opportunity to have someone who can kind of coach you learning about what is and isn't appropriate uh, behavior. I think the more, um, the more of that kind of off-leash experience you have, the better you're going to be at negotiating, um, you know, public dog runs if you choose to do that later on, that it's going to like help you just become a more educated dog park goer. Um, right. Because I think so much of it is about um, us humans learning how to, um, you know, spot, spot problems before they happen. Right. Um, and, you know, the problem, I, th I think dog parks really should have, like, lifeguards or someone in charge. Um, right. <laughs> I mean, a prob I, I experience it all the time when I'm at a dog park where I feel like I want to step in or say something, but it's like nobody has the authority to say anything to anyone at a dog park. And so right. it's like you're just, like, asking for a fight. Um, you know, another – and, I mean, that's great that you have outdoor space. I, I tend to think that dogs play best one-on-one. -on -one. So right. if you can identify some good playmates for him, um, I don't know if you've checked our, we have this new app, our community app. You can go to schoolforthedogs.com slash community to join. Um, but one goal for that app is just that, like to help people try and find other people who uh, they might be able to have play dates with for their dogs, especially younger dogs. It's so important that they get that um, that time to like get their yah yas out. Um, and uh, I was also just talking about how if he seems at, at all spooked about being outside, especially on busy streets, you know, maybe take advantage of the fact that you're in Connecticut, where I'm sure there's probably like a main street somewhere that's like more city like, but not like totally New York City, where you yeah. can like go bring his, you know, go sit there and bring his a whole meal and either give it to him piece by piece or let him eat it out of a bowl. But just as a way to help him like create good associations with all the things that you're going to see out there um, while you're sitting, right. you know, on the on a bench or whatever on the sidewalk. Um, and you can also practice, um, you know, walking down that kind of like, um, you know, fake, fake, not fake city, but you know what I mean? <laughs> not really like New York City like street, but still some, like a little bit maybe more urban right. than your parents' house. Um, just practice. 
light. <laughs> yeah, like right, like city light. Um, practice um, just like taking five, six steps and giving a treat at your leg. Taking five, six steps, giving a treat right. at your leg. I've been doing this with my dog who um, is only like seven months old and, um, you know, is still herself getting used to being on the sidewalk. Um, and sometimes it can feel silly, but it really works wonders when um, – You either just, like, pick a number, like, every seven steps, this dog is going to get a treat at my leg. Or sometimes I'll I'll say, like, every time I see, every time I get to the bumper of a parked car or every time I get to, you know, a street light or a hydrant, like, I'll pick some kind of arbitrary marker. So I'm not even really paying attention to her behavior. I'm just paying attention to some kind of marker so that I'm reminded to give her a treat Um, And I, at that time, and I try and give it pretty consistently, like near my knee, because I want her to kind of like default to being in that spot. And then I'll also give her a treat whenever she like turns back to look at me at all. And of course, the more that you're like giving her these random regular treats by your knee or wherever it is, and I I do either side because I I don't care too much which side she wants, doesn't really matter. Um, But the more you do that, the more like they they do look back at you because they're like, Right. Got, you got something for me. You got something for me. So then you can like capture those moments, and um, and you're both like giving them something to do outside. I think you're like enhancing like their good feelings about being outside. You're boosting their confidence, and you're letting them know like, hey, I'm here and I'm looking out for you. So other triggers, like as soon as I see another dog, whether or not I know she's seen the other dog. I'll give that treat. I don't let her say hi to other dogs on the street, not because I'm, like, against dog socializing. I just would rather she see another dog and it be a cue to look back at me. Um, So I I really like kind of training that is about, you know, us controlling what we're doing rather than us trying to control what they're doing um, and uh, but being smart about it in such a way where um, it ends up building behaviors that we want. Um, But tell me, how how have, like, your experiences been – bringing him to the off-leash stuff at, at school. Well, that was a perfect segue because um, it, it was a great experience. Mostly for me in realizing that, like, whatever chihuahua timidity tendencies I was seeing just in the sensory overload of, like, acclimating to the city were not a part of his personality at all. And that, in fact, he was, by definition, adaptable. Mike was like... But he was up to speed with dogs that were on their third visit, not to show off as a dog mom, but I was <laughs> very impressed. And that snowballs, you know, your warmth and uh, just your willing to believe that they can do something uh, hugely impacts whether or not they do. Um, and what you were saying also about, you know, nobody having any authority at the dog park was definitely true. And I feel very lucky that um, thus far, the spectrum of interactions he's had have been, I think, a good, you know, mixed bag. Like, there are going to be negative experiences. And the two dogs that he did run into were just, like, one of them was huge and hyper. So that's just a little unsettling. And then the other one um, kind of nipped without making contact, kind of, you know, bark without a bite. But it was still his owner was like, oh, she didn't do anything. And I responded, yeah, but it's still scarring. And she was like, no. And she's, I, yes, and then yeah, it was it's clearly- like not even worth. It's like not even worth going there. I mean, I've had so many conversations at the dog park that like don't go anywhere that just leave me like right. banging my head. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I think my best suggestion about like if you are going to go to the dog park is keep it short because like the exactly. less amount of time that you're there, the the less crap is going to happen. Um, right. Also, like try and stay within like five, ten feet of him. You know, interestingly, um, there's a really good app. I think. I forget what it's called. It's by Sue Sternberg. It's like how to. It's on how to navigate dog parks. That's a good thing to uh, check out. We also have a an on demand um, body language course. Uh, if you if you go to schoolforthedogs dot com slash courses, which I think is helpful. Um, Lily Chin has a new book out called Doggy Language that I like a lot. But anyway, um, I was going to say, you know, I I think I learned from Sue Sternberg. She talks about how there's more incidents. She's a she's a well known trainer. There's more incidents of um, uh, you know, like bad outcomes at dog parks that are small than at dog parks that are large, mm-hmm. which is not what you would think. Right. You would think it would be the opposite. Right. But at dog parks that are large, people stay with their dog. 
um, because right. you don't want your dog to be, you know, like hundred feet away whereas if you're at a small dog park like most of the ones in New York City are pretty small um, right. you know you have sort of the false sense of security of like I see my dog right. over there um, right. I, I could get there if I need to so I'm just gonna sit on this side of the park while he's on that side of the park so instead of instead of thinking about it like we're going to the park so Sunny can play think about it more mm -hmm. like we're going to the park so Sunny can be off so Sunny and I can hang out with him off leash and this is where right, like, right, we right. hang out without a leash and, but still be like within leash, like leash distance. Yes. And yeah, I mean, look out for, um, look out for any kind of hounding that any dog is doing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but again, I think one-on-one -on -one play is generally the best play. So, you know, that's another thing. Like if you have a friend who has a dog, you could sort of go to the dog park together and, and sort of have them play together. If your dog is playing with one other dog at a dog park, um, it can be easier, I think, to uh, keep the other dogs away because, like, they're occupied. But you have that outdoor space. Actually, I also um, uh, I have an upcoming – I was talking – I forget if it was before or after you tuned in, but I was saying I interviewed Mike um, for the podcast, School for the Dogs podcast recently. It hasn't aired yet, but we were talking about different... Uh-oh, I think I lost... Uh-oh, I think I lost Katie. All right, well, I think we were wrapping up, but um, I was saying I was interviewing Mike, and he was giving some suggestions, um, but also uh, I have an upcoming episode. I think it's actually, I think actually it's airing tomorrow about um, a Sniff Spot which is a really cool site where you can book people's yards for your dog to play in. Um, radical, radical yet simple idea. Um, so if you are someone who is jonesing to take your dog to a dog park, um, but have some reservations, as you probably should, um, booking uh, one of these sniff spot locations, they're, they're like depends where you are but they have them all over the all over the country not unfortunately not that many in New York City right now um, but wherever you are um, you know five dollars now or something like that you can book a spot for you for your dog um, to play ideally um, with a friend all right thank you guys for tuning in thank you Katie for your question uh, if you have a question um, and you would like to send it to me in advance I can try and get to it next week i will try and let you know beforehand if i am going to answer your question if i can have you on live um just go to schoolforthedogs.com slash q a uh all right talk to you guys soon bye